Hello guys, it is that time of day where I need to make or do the rotation on the tire on my truck, which is already done. Uh, but I also need to install a winter tire on the car of my girlfriend, which is a Subaru Impreza 2011. But while I will be on, or why it will be on the jack stand and the wheel will be removed, it is the best time to replace the brake fluid on the in this thing. Sorry about the sun. Uh, because her brake pedal is a little too much spongy for my taste and since the brake fluid has never been replaced it is the best time to do it while the wheel will be off the vehicle so to replace or to flush the brake fluid I will need three things which is brand new brake fluid a turkey syringe and an empty bottle actually it's not empty I already put some uh, old brake fluid in it uh, with a plastic tube, a rubber hose or something. This is gas line for a small engine carburetor and stuff like that. This is a 516 inches rubber hose which will, will be perfect. It fit very tight on the brake bleeder so it will be a perfect match to drain this thing because the last <clears throat> because the last thing we want it's obviously air bubble going back into the system. So when using a very tight tube, uh, it avoid hair to go between the tube and the brake bleeder. And why I will need to put brake fluid in here, it's simply because when I will push the pedal, some brake fluid will escape, go into this line and the purpose of the brake fluid in there is so the air bubble get out of the line, go inside and escape the bottle. While if I have some pushback or pullback into the system, it will pull brake fluid and not air. Obviously, this is the old brake fluid and it won't go back in the system. It's simply to avoid air to go back in the line. So this is the job for today. So let's put the car on the jack stand. Oh, a quick detail before I'm starting uh, lifting the car. Uh, it's always best to loose the lug nuts before lifting the car because after it's in the air, if you have nuts that are very tight, you will have a hard time uh, removing them since the wheel will spin uh, so it's always best to lose them not remove them completely obviously but just lose them so when the car will be in the air it will be easier to unscrew them completely and remove the wheel okay guys there's a couple of things to know or to do before starting this job first one being checking all your bleeders to make sure they're not stuck so you don't start the whole process just to have uh, to just to reach the last wheel and find out that it is stuck so you have to order new bleeders so for this reason it's always better to check all your bleeders before starting the job so if there's one stuck you won't start the job you will wait to buy new bleeders so you can start on a fresh base or a a good base but I already done that and they're all in good working condition uh, so I can start the job so first you need to make sure there is no contaminant on the tank on the reservoir of the brake fluid so you don't put any contaminant in the reservoir because it might it can damage your brake system and this is the last thing you want and for the older vehicle, you always needed to start with the wheel further from the master cylinder and make your way forward to the closest one. It's not true anymore since the ABS system have appeared in the more recent vehicle. So back in time, the far wheel from the master cylinder was the rear right. It's not true on every vehicle because you need to start with the wheel and it's farther from the ABS module or the ABS pump. In this case, it's located on the front right section of the car. 
So that means we will start with the rear left wheel instead of with the rear right wheel. After that, we will go rear right, front left, and front right. So it's important to locate your ABS pump or your ABS module before starting the job because if you start with the wrong wheel, you will keep pumping air in your system and you will not know why it's happening. So now my reservoir is clean. Sorry about the sun. My reservoir is clean. I'm ready to pump out the whole liquid, the whole brake fluid, but not all of it because the last thing we want is creating more bubble or more air bubble in the system and of course we can use that brake fluid to put in our jar so we don't have to waste a lot of brand new fluid to fill this thing and this is where our turkey syringe get very useful since this reservoir is very small, I cannot remove more than that because uh, I will create air in the system. Now I will pour brand new fluid in the reservoir. I will take this thing out of there. forget to pull or to install the cap back because when you will push the brake pedal it will go everywhere under your hood and obviously since I'm doing a complete flush I will have to watch the level on the roots of war of the reservoir uh, very often and make sure it doesn't run out of fluid because I will have to start all over again so now the reservoir is full I'm ready to install my jar system at the rear left wheel and start pumping the brake to push all the bad fluid out of the system. So obviously it's a one-man job so it's easier than having someone pumping the brake inside while you open and close the breather or the bleeder valve every time. Uh, but for doing this job you need to make sure that the tube inside the jar it's in the fluid in all time because if it's not it will pump back air in the system so now I'm ready to open the first bleeder valve and pump the brake to push some of the bad fluid outside of this brake system and also get rid of all the air in the system I don't know if it will have any hair but since the pedal is pretty spongy and it's pretty far on the floor I believe there is some air doesn't need to be opened very wide as soon as you see some fluid getting out of it if any fluid get out because the way it's as you can see there's flowing uh, fluid getting out so it's open wide enough I can go in the car and pump the brake gently because if you pump or push on the brake too fast you risk that the tube uh, eject from the bleeder valve and you will have a big mess to pick it up later As you can see, I pushed the pedal now five times. There is no more air bubble, but you saw a lot of big pocket of air in the system. Reason why the pedal was so spongy. I believe I will have some air in every wheel. Maybe not the last one, we'll see. But now it's only fluid, meaning on this line, the air has already been purged or pushed out. Uh, I will fill up the reservoir and pump it up until the tube is completely clear because my new brake fluid is clear 
so I will push a little more fluid in there until it's clear meaning it's all brand flu it's all brand new fluid from the reservoir to the caliper I don't know if you saw the big blob of gray black stuff that just gone into the tube. Uh, this is some of the dirt from the system. Since there was an air pocket in the system, it built up kind of not rust but dirt inside the ABS pump. Uh, so this is one of the clog that got pushed out of the ABS bomb. I still can see some air bubble and some kind of little piece of dirt. So I'm almost done, but obviously it's a long process, especially for the first wheel, because I have to push all the bad fluid from the ABS pump as well, or the ABS module. But uh, it's already seems a little clear or cleaner than when we start but I will go ahead and push some more to make sure I get rid of every dirt crap in the ABS module. It's way more clear now. Uh, I lied a bit. My new brake fluid is a little yellow. Reason why you still can see some yellow there. Plus my tube is kind of hold uh, because I did the job on my truck last year with the same tube it was clean but it was a bit yellow the reason why it's not completely white uh, but I'm done with this wheel and important again you need to close your bleeder valve before disconnecting the tube And it's just seating in there so you don't have to over tight it because you will break something. So you saw by yourself that a lot of air got out of this wheel, the first wheel, and also some dirt from the systems. So now we will proceed with the rear right wheel, after that the front left, and finally the front right. There you go, it's enough. So let's see how much air I will get out of this side or out of this wheel. So my, again, don't forget to check the level on your brake fluid container or reservoir. I just filled it up so, I am re so I'm ready to go and pump the brake pedal. Start to be a little pretty clear. I will fill up the reservoir one last time. And I will go pump again because I can see a debris air floating in there. So I will do it one more time after that. I will close this and I will go in the front. I will speed up the process a bit because now you understand how I'm doing it. So I will speed up the process for the last two wheels.
Okay, it's clear now. I can close this splitter valve and go on the last wheel. Already pushed four times, doesn't seem to have more bubble getting out of here. The tube seems clear, there's no debris. I will still fill up the reservoir one last time and do it again. Sorry guys, the camera died on me, but I was practically done. Uh, I did the last wheel and before ending the job completely, check your brake fluid level again and if it's at the maximum you're done but it's always better to do a road test after a job like that just to make sure you haven't created a leak and everything is working perfectly uh, in that case uh, as I expected the pedal is way more responsive and don't go right at the floor as before I start the job now I know my girlfriend's all set for the winter, she won't have any brake problem at all. I hope it helps some of you who don't know, who didn't know how to flush a brake system. Now you know it's very easy and it is a one man job so you don't need to be two guys to do that. It is the same process if you only want to bleed the system and not completely, completely flush it. Uh, it's a one man job as well, you, you use the jar with brake fluid in it, sorry. Uh, and you pump your brake as if you were to but an important thing is don't forget to close the bleeder valve before removing the tube because you will have to start all over again because you will let air get into your brake caliper or your brake system so this is it for now please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified as soon as i will release another video so on this i wish everybody a great day and see you later Thank you.